Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be doing some blank casting using Alumilite Slow Clear. And uh, we're going to be making a hybrid with this piece of, I believe this is maple burl, was sent to me by a friend of mine, good friend of mine, and a little bit of aluminum honeycomb because everybody seems to be going nuts for it. Now, when I use aluminum honeycomb in my own castings, I try to deform it a little bit. It comes and it's perfectly octagonal, usually. But I find what it is, and it's inserted directly in, it tends to chip out and fail a lot easier. If I give it a little bit of a pull in a few different directions, a little scrunch, I can get a little bit different pattern to the honeycomb and it uh, seems to work a lot better. So we're gonna leave that off to the side and we're gonna get started with the pull. Now, I like the Illuminate Slow Clear, mostly because that's what I started with, so I kind of like to stick with what I know. And uh, it works really well. Uh, Demold time is quick. Uh, and uh, I know. I know how to work it and you know if uh, I started with a different resin I'd probably want to stick with it but this one's easy uh, one to one ratio and I do ounces a lot of people do grams say it's more accurate but my brain does not comprehend those large of a number so Get myself a Sharpie, very important. And we're gonna start. This mold here, when it doesn't have anything in it, takes 10 ounces of resin. Well, a little under that. Now with this in it, it'll probably take about eight. I'm gonna pour, I'm gonna mix 10. I got a couple other molds I'm gonna pour with the extra. So we'll get mixing. So first off, I do the B first, because my pumps are kind of worn out, so it makes it a little bit difficult to pump the B. Yeah, it's pretty darn close. 4.990 and I write it on the cup because my memory is shot so we tear that out and we add 4.99 of A my A pump is always short. I don't know if it's just me or if it's how Illumilite works out. But these pumps are supposed to give you about an ounce each pump. Okay, that's pretty close. I'm a little bit over. Do another drop there. Being exactly perfectly the same when you're mixing this much resin isn't as important if I was mixing it up for just this little mold with the feathers in it or jewelry or something I'd worry about that hundreds of an ounce but mixing up 10 ounces I don't really have to worry about it 
mix it up, scrape down the sides, scrape the bottom, because the bee does like to stick. Now once we get it all mixed up, comes nice and clear. I don't know if you can see that, how clear it goes. We're gonna divide it into three parts here. And I don't usually measure when I do this, I just kinda go by how much I feel it should have. Put a little bit of my polo in the clear that I'm going to use. If you guys follow me on Facebook, you all know what the hollow is. Now I have three solar color powders. These are the color change and they change in the sun. Or if you have a black light, like I do, black light flashlight, you can see what colors they are just by putting the flashlight on them. This green kind of turns into a bit of a purple. This is a red. And the pink turns purple too. Don't remember what this color is actually supposed to turn into. But these are the ones that I get. I get them from Michael's, the craft store. That's the brand, spin it. They work pretty well. They give you a good amount of it. I've been playing with it a little bit over the last couple weeks. And uh, it seems to be working. This is the first time I've had three different colors of it. Go ahead, start mixing up our colors. And yes, I make a huge mess. Just ask my wife. I'm surprised she's not over there giggling. And here's the white. And I don't measure anything. <laughs> I don't measure anything when I cook either. find that these solar power powders tend to uh, need a little bit more stirring than the Pearl X micas or the Black Diamond mica that most of us casters use regularly. It's not the end of the world if you get a little speck, but it's always good to have it nice and I'm going to add a little bit of uh, pearlescent powders to these after I get them all mixed up. The pearl powders seem to uh, mix up a bit easier anyway. And uh, this piece of wood that I got in here, I did stabilize it. It stabilized in. Uh, Best Value Vac Stabilizing Resin. I know a lot of people like the uh, cactus juice, but uh, I get it easy. I have an easier time getting the uh, Best Value Vac here. I'm 
gonna use a little bit of my gold ghost powder. This I got from a paint company in Southern California. I'm gonna put that in the clear. This just kind of disappears. That's where the ghost part comes in. And gives a little bit of a shimmer to clear resin. It's an effect I like a lot. And on the other three, I'm gonna do, this is actually Lumilite's pearlescent powder. It gives a lot of spark, a lot of pearlescence to whatever powders you're using, even if it's a non-pearl powder, like these are. They don't have a lot of pearlescent to them, so. It's kind of like what I, it's kind of what I like is the pearl powders. Get that all mixed in there. Check the temperature of these. They feel like they're just starting to warm up. Keep my handy dandy little thermometer here. And they're 86 degrees. And I usually like to pour them, mix the colors in at least, at about 95 to 100 depending on how much color mix I want. I'm going to start off by pouring a little bit of the clear directly in first. Here's a base for the colors to kind of swirl in. If I was making these for ink pen blanks, I wouldn't use the clear as much. I'd use the clear added in afterwards after I poured all my colors in to give it some interest and depth. But since these are for diamond painting pens, the clear seems to be what everybody likes. So. We're just gonna have to wait a little bit for that to come up to temperature. Well, that's coming up to temperature. mold here this is a brand new mold so I'm gonna give it a little spritz of stoner mold release you don't have to do this on silicone molds but I find that if you do they last a little bit longer you only have to coat them I'd say every five or six times you uh, cast with them just makes them last longer. I've had this one. This is probably done over a hundred blanks. Same with this one. These are both from uh, PT Peak Hound Subbies, and uh, he makes a great mold. The uh, one I'm using here is from uh, another company. I, I don't recall the name of it. I'll see if I can find it and I'll post it in the description. This does four blanks. And uh, my other ones I have from PT Subbies or Pete Town Subbies, uh, they only do uh, three blanks. And I have a huge one, it's six. But it takes too much resin to fill, so. Right now we're at 91 degrees, and that should be good to start pouring. I'll give these one more stir. Make sure everything's incorporated. And no, I don't wear gloves. Some people say I should when I do this, but when I wear gloves, I get resin all over me. It's like this thing in your head where you have gloves on so you don't pay attention as much to what you touch. So I'm a little bit more careful. I got a roll of paper towels here. If I get anything on me, I wipe it up real quick. That way uh, I don't end up ruining another 
pair of pants or shirts. Yeah, that happens a lot. Okay. And we'll start pouring. And this mat here is a lifesaver. The only drawback to these mats that, I, that you get from Rockler is they're hard to clean. I end up taking it and power washing it with my power washer. We'll start with just some random pores. And this is where it, uh, you kind of have fun with it. Mix your colors around a little bit. If you see something that's in your resin, it should be in there. It's time to pick it out. And the interesting thing about doing it in clear is you can manipulate the pattern you get your extra clear. Because I like to have good separation between the different colors. So when everything is said and done, you get something exceptionally interesting. That's probably enough color. I'll come in with the last of my clear. And then I'm gonna take a toothpick here. All you need stir it too much and they start to blend now I got this extra resin so I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple of these colors never used this mold before so diamond mold I think I'll pour the rest of this into this big diamond mold. See how far that gets me. And when you're pouring, the higher you pour from, the deeper into the level, into the resin, it'll penetrate. So if I pour from up here, it'll mix really well into the layer below. So if you pour right at the surface, it stays right on the surface. It's a different way of mixing, you get a different effect when you pour from real high up. You can kinda get it to blend in different ways. The fun thing about resin is you, if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. It's just a couple drops of resin. That's why I play around with uh, resin in these small molds like this. And this is actually a fondant mold. That I got on sale at Hobby Lobby. That's where I got it. And 
At this point, I think all my resin is pretty well set up on me, so I need to get it in the pressure pot. Because Illuminate slow clear. Oh, there's my problem. See, I told you I'd make a mess. See if I can fill that back up. status. Ah well. Got my little carriage that I use. Put my lamp on there. And this is going to go into my pressure pot. it to uh, right at 60 psi oh almost forgot the most important part Come, I just set it right in there, kind of work it down real easy. So it just goes in, just below the surface. Now we go in the pressure pump. Well, here it is. I went ahead and popped it out of the mold. I think it turned out pretty cool. See the back, some of the hollow got pushed down to the bottom by the, uh, the honeycomb. So here it is in the shade. And it turns colors. I think the white that I added in here kind of got lost. We'll see once I cut it, and I'll show you the cut blanks too. You can see all the pearlescence that I added. And it's a really pretty one. cut side and I'll let you see the magic I like to spray them down with a little crystal clear after I cut them and then you can really see the, the pattern fills in all little grooves and whatnot and then you can really see that pattern pop
take one of these, I'll take this one. I'll take it out in the sun. You can see it change colors real quick. It looks like the white is there a little bit in that little bit of red that you see, but I didn't use quite enough of it. Next time I'll use more of the white because the white's supposed to turn red. These have to sit for about three or four days before I can turn them. So uh, I'll put a video up once I get one turned. But uh, as for now, thanks for watching.